and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, today is the second Sunday of the Holy and Great Land, the Sunday of Gregory Palamas, the Archbishop of Thessalonica. Today we are continuing our celebration of the Orthodoxy. Last Sunday we have the Triumph of Orthodoxy, and today we have St. Gregory the Palamas, which triumph, triumphed over the Latin heretics, which was teaching perversely the word of God and the interpretation of the grace of God, of the Holy Spirit. And what was exactly this monk, Varlam, which was educated in Rome, was teaching that a man cannot be saved except he studies the philosophy in order to get the wisdom and to be able to understand God and to reach theosis. So now, St. Gregory, at that point, was the Archbishop of Thessalonica. Till this time, he did not write anything. But being moved by this heretical teaching, by this heretical influence on the Church of God, he started confronting them, and he started writing all this and preaching. And this, this is how we have his writings today, because he could not keep his mouth closed when he saw how they are throwing dirt on the church of God and on the truth of God. And of course, being experienced in the hesychastical life, because he, he lived about 20 years in Mount Athos, and for a while he was the elder, the abbot of the Monastery of Figmenum. So, of course, he was experienced in the mystical prayer and in the, the simplicity of interpretation. So, and he is contradicting this Latin guy on his teaching that in order to reach theosis, first of all, we need two things, to clean up our mind and our heart. It doesn't matter do how many PhDs we have, literally. If we go back at the beginning of the Christian era, the majority of the disciples of Christ were very simple and uneducated men, but they reached that knowledge, that wisdom through their heart, through their mind. So this is because we have to understand that God is the beginning of all knowledge. So if you do not know God, you, do not, you cannot say that you have knowledge. So what kind of knowledge can be without God? just a limited earthly knowledge. And of course, this shows that you don't know yourself. And if you don't know yourself, you don't know your high heart and you don't know your mind. And how can you know God if you cannot know things that you can feel and touch? And of course, the higher 
divine and holy cannot be absorbed by our limited and dirty brain if we are not cleansing it through the divine mystery of repentance, of confession. It's the same th thing. Why we are cleaning our homes? Right? Because we cannot. It becomes dirty and smell bad and you have different kind of insects and other stuff and it's not pleasant, right? So then how we are le letting these spiritual insects and dirt to accumulate in our heart and our brain? And it overtakes at some point and we cannot see anymore the light and we're losing completely the connection with the light and we're living a dissolute life without God, without the grace of God, without His blessing, without His paternal love. So it's the, the same thing with an abandoned child. Even though he will be raised in a, an orphanage, the best case scenario. He will be raised and educated somehow, but he is still missing the love of his parents, mother and father. And we know how many cases those individuals, a big percentage of them, they're ending up in jail or a very difficult life. Why? Because they don't have that bond that connects the child with their parents. So it's the, exactly the same thing, the spiritual bondage between us and God through church, through the mysteries that the church provides us to unite us, to connect us with our Creator, with our Redeemer, with our God. And we saw this also in today's Gospel. This Gospel it's very well known to us. Capernaum. It's a city, it's a very well known city in the ancient time, in the time of gospel, in the time of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Many miracles he performed in that specific region. And today again, he's visiting one of the houses, one of the homes of Capernaum. And the people, as soon as they heard that he was there, they came and the, the house was immediately fulfilled and not only but even out of people were staying outside to listen to his words and now we're having here an interesting approach four individuals are carrying a paralytic man with his bed Approaching, we are seeing the, the, the indifference of the people. They did not care that this man was paralyzed, was suffering. They wanted to keep the grace that they were receiving from him just for themselves. Isn't this familiar to us? Many times we have something, we hear something, we are keeping it just for ourselves or even in, in church you know when a new person comes instead of being open loving and embrace we are making different approach and and sometimes blocking the entrance 
for those individuals and not only but dividing them departing them from God we are becoming the blocking the stumbling block for many and this happens many times and yet we are calling us ourselves Orthodox Christians so but they were determined to finalize their job they removed the roof and they drop of the bed with the paralyzed man in front of Jesus imagine what kind of love what kind of devotion and care they had towards this man we don't know what he did for them in order for someone to have such an attitude probably he did something good for them when he was healthy before he got in this situation and they weren't even his relatives they were his friends how many of us today are these kind of friends how many of us have this approach towards our fellow men to take them and to get them to Christ to help them to receive their health physical and spiritual when we are seeing something ah, it's not my problem it doesn't affect me right this is pretty much <laughs> but when it affects us directly then we don't know what to do we want to scream out of our lungs and to ask for help ask for advice what to do when it affects us personally with our family but when it affects somebody else it's okay we're just turning our back but these things saint apostle and evangelist mark put us in this text specifically to show us the importance of caring about each other of praying for each other because see jesus was he himself was so moved but their love and their faith and because of them that's why we are called to pray for each other because of their faith and because of their love first of all listen what he said son your sins are forgiven pointing on the problem that was the problem that he found himself on the in this situation was paralyzed so the sin paralyzed him remember first our soul get, is getting sick and after the sickness of the soul reflects on our body and when it it comes to our body it's a ringing bell wake up what you're doing you're doing something wrong and we're starting running to the hospital different kind of doctors and when they went at the last minute when we heard the sentence well we cannot do anything only god can help you only then we are coming back to our mind to our senses and wait a minute what what am i doing why i'm spending my my life my money with these doctors that they they are powerless they cannot do anything and ultimately we're going to god but first we have to do this thing first we have to seek god to find our spiritual curing through confession through repentance and after our body will be also cured because he is the doctor of soul and body soul and body 
This is what we have to remember and emphasize throughout our lives. This is one of the most important things for us and for everyone, for each and everyone. Because without the spiritual health, we cannot do anything. Usually when we see each other, or when we have a feast, a birthday, name day, whatever, we usually are wishing health. But we never say about the spiritual health. If our soul is sick, so what can I do with my physical health? Doesn't give me anything if my, my soul is suffering. Right? So first, let us seek the spiritual health. Because that's the important thing. Because this, the soul is the most precious gift that we received from God. The, it's, it's literally priceless. Nothing else can replace one's soul. See, for the body, we can do surgeries, we can do a lot of stuff. Right? But for the soul, what can you do? Nothing. Only the spiritual cleansing through repentance and confession. That's the only cure that can regenerate, that can boost our spiritual health, is the communion with God through the mystery of repentance, through the mystery of confession. And this is what... St. Gregory preached and this is what the gospel is teaching us today. So of course those being there specifically the Pharisees in their hearts in their mind there was saying who is this to say these things he is blaspheming because God alone can forgive sins. But he, knowing the heart of man, he's addressing to them, what you're thinking this in your heart? What is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven, pointing the problem of his illness, or wake up, Get your bed and go home. And after he finished this, he's addressing to the paralytic. Son, wake up. Take up your bed and go home. And he immediately stood up. So, see, they said that God alone can do that. And he is discovering them that he is God. He is the son of God. And he has the authority first to cure the soul and secondly after we were purified, were cleansed spiritually, the, we are receiving also the health of our body, of, of the flesh. It's pretty clear that without first cleansing the soul, our body will greatly suffer. And this, in this period now, that we are heading towards the resurrection, towards Golgotha, we have to have this in our mind and make it possible. We have to remember the statement of the prodigal son, <clears throat> how he came back to his senses through starving. through fasting because he was starving he ended up to wish to eat the food of the pigs hanging out with the pigs see with the sin with the demons but the absence the absence of food cleansed his brain his mind and he came up back to his senses saying what what am I doing why I'm here 
I can go back to my, my father's home and ask him to receive me, not as his son, but as a servant. And I will be better off than I'm now. So, and that's why the fasting is important for us. It's the cleansing of our heart and of our mind. And then we are coming back to our senses and reflecting how many things that we are doing are evil or are against God or are against our brethren. These, these things we have to reflect now. And that's why the church had provided us this period of cleansing. We are abstaining from food, but this is the way of cleansing our soul or cleansing our body, cleansing our heart and our mind. So understanding now the importance of this, let us prepare, my dear ones. Let us embrace the teaching of our church and let us walk on the path of our salvation. Let us embrace each other with love. Let us receive the grace of God and let us spread this love of God toward, towards our brethren towards our kinsmen and all together carrying our crosses with love in repentance and awe let us cry with one voice God is the Lord and the Redeemer and the Savior and the Savior of our souls and bodies Amen God bless you all